Welcome back to another edition of the Interlake Sports Now. We'll get this thing started out with a few local headlines, then a supersized prep roundup, and after that, we're going to dive in to a nice prep players of the week. We took last week off a little hiatus, and then we're going to get to that Grizz and Bobcats basketball talk. I'm your host, Josh Dugan. Exciting time for the start of 2023, the Northwest Montana sports scene. Can't wait to dive into all that. But for that, quick reminder, today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Voted the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene. Celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit NomadGCS.com for more info. That's NomadGCS.com for more information. All righty. Getting right into the fun stuff. Quick reminder, subscribe to the Daily Interlake E-Edition for all your local news right at your fingertips. Check out the DailyInterlake.com for more information. But getting right into the fun stuff, our first headline this week is a piece of recruiting news related to the local area. So Jackson Hensley, the leading rusher on last fall's Glacier Wolfpack squad, announced via Twitter that he is committed to Montana Tech to play football on Friday. Quote, I'm excited to announce my full commitment to Montana Tech. Would like to thank you. Would like to thank my family, friends, and coaches for everything they've done to give this opportunity. End quote. Roll digs. Playing running back for the pack for the first time, the 185 pounder finished sixth in the Western AA in rushing in 2022, pick up, picking up 712 yards on 11 carries, a 6.4 av- yard average. He also caught 20 passes for 226 yards in 10 games. Seven and four Wolfpack. He scored ten touchdowns on the ground and two receiving. The Ore Diggers are coached by former Flathead high coach Kyle Sampson, who has a twelve and eight record in two seasons at the helm. Last season, Montana Tech went seven and three and finished third in the Frontier Conference. Hensley will join former Wolfpack teammates Jake Turner and Luke Bailu on the Ore Diggers roster. Bailu is a tight end, and Turner plays receiver. Next up, the Phil Steele FCS All-American list was recently named, and the Grizz were heavily represented, and the Bobcats are not as well. Let's run through those players who picked up the accolades. So, defensive back Robbie Houck was named first team on the list. Second team, you have Patrick O'Connell, linebacker. Defensive back Justin Ford, kick returner Malik Flowers, and punt returner Junior Bergen. Third team, punter Patrick Rohrbach, who was named the punter of the year in the FCS. Probably could have had him higher than third. That's just a critique on my end. And then all-purpose, Sean Chambers. Fourth team, all-purpose, Sean Chambers, Montana State quarterback. Fourth team, all-purpose, Malik Flowers, Montana. My big takeaway, congrats to all those Grizz players. Congrats to Chambers from Montana State. But gosh, I was kind of surprised the Bobcats didn't get a little bit more love on there. I mean, they do play a very team-first style. Maybe that takes away from the stats and the individual accolades a little bit. But, I mean, they were pretty dominant this year. I think they got to have one or two more guys on that list. You can find somewhere for them. Tommy Malak. Third team, at least. I don't know. He had a heck of a year. All right. Our last headline for this week is from our friends at the Lake County Leader. This was a unique story I couldn't help but share about Polson High School wrestling coach and town mayor, Eric Huffine, written by Brandon Hansen for the Lake County Leader. Here's an excerpt of the story, and you can find the whole story on the Lake County Leader website. Eric Huffine probably has more on his plate than most high school wrestling coaches. The longtime Polson resident, along with being the head wrestling coach for the Pirates and the owner of a local concrete company, is also the mayor of Polson. Quote, it is so much easier to fill your schedule when you find your passions. You know the saying, it's, if it's important, you'll find a way, and if it's not, you'll find excuses. That's a great quote from the Polson mayor slash wrestling coach. Couldn't be more behind that one. I think that's what life's all about. Find those passions. Find what's going to keep you going. So I really like that one. Thought that was worth sharing. Back to the story here. After a hiatus from the program, he took the reins two years ago. Last year, the Polson Pirates had 11 kids turn out for the wrestling after COVID-19 had shut things down in 2020. This year, that number's grown to 34 kids, 14 girls, and 20 boys. Quote, it's amazing what we have going on now. We have the kids convince all these matches our live competition, practices with singlets, we use them to gather data and measure effort. The wins and losses don't matter. The experience, wrestling, competitive matches is what does. End quote. Great quote from Hufine. A lot of respect for people giving back to their local community, making an impact on the community, and there's no doubt, mayor, youth athletics coach, that's a great way to give back. So a lot of respect there. I thought that was an awesome story, and shout out. Brandon Hansen and our friends from the Lake County Leader for that one. Okay, let's move into the prep roundup. 
jam-packed prep roundup this week. We're going to kind of go day by day, just recap the action, then we'll dive into our prep players of the week. So, Tuesday, we'll just start with Tuesday. It was such an action-packed week. We had Ronan beating Whitefish in basketball, boys basketball, 62 to 56. The game went to overtime. Marlow, Tonka set, scored 26 points, and the Chiefs pulled away in overtime. So Mason Couch did score 17 for the Bulldogs. Also on that day, Stillwater Christian beat Troy 62 to 45. Luke Frampton scored 24 points to lead Stillwater Christian. Thursday night, Columbia Falls beat Libby 77-46. Cody Schweiger led four Columbia Falls players in double figures with 15 points, and the Wildcats cruised on Libby 77-46. So next up, Big Four defeated Troy 81 to 15. Heck of a score there. Bryce Gilliard scored 18 points and 11 Big Four players scored as the Vikings rolled to the District 7B win. Friday night in boys basketball action, Sentinel took a 40 to 38 win over Flathead. Took a little bit of late game heroics for Sentinel who waited till the very end to take the lead with, uh, let me find the name here, Riley Allen hitting two free throws late to give the Spartans 38-37 lead with 107 remaining. So, that was a tough one. But Flathead's grown as a team. They're putting it together and right future. So Butte took care of business over Glacier, 60 to 55 Friday night. The Wolfpack though did respond on Saturday with a huge win over Sentinel, 70 to 37. Glacier combined balanced shooting and Adam Nukanen led the way with three three pit pointers and Glacier and 10 Glacier points. So I got a little mixed up there, but solid game from Nukanen. Tyler McDonald scored 13 points to lead the pack. He buried the Spartans under seven, second half threes. So back to Flathead, they did fall to Butte on Saturday, 59 to 48. That being said, Noah Cummings was a bright spot for, for the Braves. He had three three-pointers and scored 30 points. So they do remain winless, but their team's growing. Cummings has had some big games. Just a matter of putting it together when it counts. Stillwater Christian, 65. Helena Homeschool, 31. That was our last score. Boys basketball Saturday. Stillwater Christian has been winning some games, local school, showing them some love on the pod. They're definitely taking care of business. Luke Frampton hit four three-pointers and scored 24 points in that Saturday win. On to the girls' basketball. Tuesday night, Ronan beat Whitefish 35-34. Stillwater Christian took care of business over Troy 67-16. Zoe Lynn scoring 17 points. Lynn hit 8 of 15 shots from the floor, who did lead 26-0 after one quarter. Thursday, Columbia Falls, the girls took care of business 65 to 26 over Libby. Hope McAtee scored 14 points, and Emily Alton had a double double to lead the Columbia Falls Wildcats. So, Big Fork on Thursday with another big win 92 to 10 over Troy. Braden Gunlock poured in 25 points, 17 during a dominant first half to lead the Big Fork Valkyries past Troy. Gunlock did hit three three pointers on the day. Friday, Polson. Took care of business first. Whitefish, 44 to 32. The Bulldogs hung around early, but as time went on, the Pirates' pressure defense was too much. Pirates junior Addison Gallatin led all scores with 20 points on the evening. Also knocked down four three-pointers on the night. Glacier beat Butte Friday. Freshman Carly Allen scored seven of her 11 points in the pivotal third quarter, and Glacier rallied past Butte for a 48-36 girls basketball win at home. Allen's outburst sparked a 19-9 third quarter surge that pushed the Wolf Pack into a 37-31 lead. Sentinel did beat Flathead on Friday, 50-42. But on Saturday, Flathead bounced back in a dogfight type of game with the Butte Bulldogs, only fitting. It finished 39-36 with Flathead holding on late. I was at that one. That was a scrappy game. Both teams were in it. Flathead started out. They were down 7-0. Butte was making a run. And then Flathead finished the half with a big run. So it was one of those games... By the end of it, Flathead held on for the lead. Kennedy Moore was the leading scorer with 12 points, knocking down two shots from beyond the arc. On Saturday, Browning took care of business versus Polson with a 55 to 48 win to remain undefeated. Big Fork won 72 to 12 over Deer Lodge on Saturday. Hit Patton Gunlock scored 19 points all in the first half, and the unbeaten Big Fork Valkyries down Deer Lodge. So Braden Gunlock was strong again with, in, with 18 in that one. So. Last up for the girls' basketball action, Cupbank took a 61-30 win over Whitefish Saturday. Mackenzie Johnson scored 15 points and taking a win up in class, up a class. So impressive stuff there from Cupbank coming in as a Class B school, taking the win. All right, let's get into the wrestling world. On Tuesday, the Wolfpack boys and girls picked up 
pins at Hellgate. The Glacier Wolfpack piled up four pins in a technical fall and cruised to a 65 to six dual wrestling win over Missoula Hellgate Tuesday. The girls also had a successful day. Flathead wrestlers were dominant. Let's see. Flathead wrestlers were dominant in Missoula on Tuesday. The top ranked and two time defending state champion Flathead Braves ran their dual wrestling record to nine and zero in the season, sweeping Missoula's Big Sky and Hellgate. Bravets downed Hellgate as well, 27 to six in a girls' duel. Bella Downing had the quickest pin in a minute and seven seconds. So under the weekend wrestling action, we had some more wrestling action over the weekend. Really jam-packed time right now. And we'll start out with Columbia Falls, who took second at the Ronan Duels Friday. Justin Winhour, let's see. Yeah, Justin Winhour earned a pin and went 4-0 on the day. Really strong showing for the Wildcats. And they followed that up again Saturday at the Western Ronan Invitational. Columbia Falls edged Frenchtown, and among those kind of individual performers who were big, they had Justin Windauer, Winslow Peter, Tyler Guilfrey, and Blaze Cronk all win their individual championships. So great job by the Wildcats there. On Saturday, the Flathead Bravettes topped the field at the Western Montana Girls Invitational, a day after claiming the top spot in a dual tournament in Ronan on Friday. Bella Downey and Olivia Reinhardt were individual winners, and Mikel Lee, Trinity Bowievine, and Syke Shelmerdine were second. The Glacier girls were 18 points behind rival Flathead with 151 points. Brooke Eden and Ariana Conklin were individual winners for the Wolfpack. As for the Flathead and Glacier boys, they were both competing in Spokane Valley at the Pacific Northwest Classic. The day ended in another tournament win for the Flathead Brave, Brave Brawlers. The Braves invested 18 teams to take top honors at the Pacific Northwest Classic held at University High School in Spokane Valley. Out of eight wrestlers that made the finals, Gabe Blake, Noah Patton, Sawyer Troop, and Anders Thompson took home titles at their weight class for the Braves. Anders Thompson faced his twin Gunner in the final, and Gunner forfeited to his brother. Aiden Downing got caught in a pin at 126 and ended up in second. Logan Stansbury and Kate Troop also came in second. Here's a quote from Flathead coach Jeff Thompson. Overall, the Braves had some great competition and got in some quality matches before heading back to Montana to wrestle in the Rocky Mountain in Missoula next weekend. We still got some work to do, but this team is really coming together and just seems to fight for every point. All the hard work over the off season is really showing in our wrestling. As for Glacier, they were missing three wrestlers due to injury, but the 10 who did show up put up a strong showing and earned a sixth place finish. Keegan Vasquez was strong again and continued his dominant season by winning the 132 bracket and being named the outstanding wrestler of the tournament. Josh Melton was second for Glacier at 120, 120 pounds. Wow. That was what we call a foot on the gas kind of prep roundup. I, you, you need to buckle up for that one because we were jamming through it. Lots of action. But that's what's going on winter sports right now. A little bit of everything. It's awesome time. So much sports going on in the local area. Gotta love it. Shout out all these athletes for putting in the work, putting in the effort, balancing the books. I always say that because it ain't easy. So before we move along to our prep players of the week and some Cat Grizz talk, here's a message from the team at Nomad. At Nomad, the key to our success has always been the amazing talent and experience of our team. Based in one of the most beautiful places on earth, our Kalispell, Montana headquarters is home to some of the most skilled engineers, integrators, software developers, welders, electricians, carpenters, mechanics, and professional staff in the market. Our team is dedicated to working collaboratively with our valued clients to ensure success in every mission. Join our team. Check out our careers page at nomadgcs.com slash careers to view current job openings and to submit an application. That's nomadgcs.com slash careers. All right, let's get into those prep players of the week. As always, shout out all our local athletes putting in the work. Here's your prep players of the week presented by Hagadome Media Group Montana. The team in Montana is here to help you grow. Our skill team will assess your marketing goals and craft ROI-focused campaigns to meet your business needs. Our integrated marketing solutions will help your people find you wherever they are looking, whether it's Google, YouTube, apps, or your local newspaper. Contact Anton at 406-758-4410 for more information. That's 406-758-4410 for more information. All right, here's your Hagadone Media Group Montana Prep Players of the Week. Starting out with some of our Prep Coopers. From the Flathead Brave Vets basketball team, we have Akila Kuba, Kubi, excuse me, for her defensive efforts and the Brave Vets win over Butte. That's Akila Kubi. I was at that game, and sometimes you can have an impact on the game bigger than the stat sheet, and that is exactly what Kubi did in this win. She had a huge block for the Brave Vets, three second half steals at least I counted, and ultimately played that kind of 
Dennis Rodman, Draymond Green type of role where the impact just goes far beyond the scoring and the stat sheet and you're simply making those winning plays, hustle plays, diving for the loose balls, those kind of things, leaving your heart on the line that win a team a ball game and a close game. That's what Kubi did for the Bravettes. It was awesome to watch. Shout out her teammates for you know doing a lot of scoring. Kubi had nine points on the night. Kennedy Moore had 12 in that one. It was a fun one for the Bravettes, but that hustle, that heart, that was what stood out to me the most and had to give a shout out here in our prep players of the week. You know, I'm always trying to look for the unconventional impact players. It's easy to look at the stat sheet and go, hey, this person putting up big numbers, scoring a lot. They're the reason the team's winning. But ultimately, a lot of the times you need those glue players who really make the team go. Next up, speaking of big scorers, though, I kind of walked right into this one, contradict myself here. The basketball scene as well. Big Four Cooper, Braden Gunlock who had 25 points in a 92-10 win over Troy Thursday. She followed that up with 18 points in Big Fork, 72-15 win over Deer Lodge. Two dominant performance performances for the Vals, and they stay undefeated. So with Gunlock being the offensive force in both games, kind of driving the ship there, I had to give her the nod. Those are some dominant wins. Wrestling, let's jump into the wrestling world a little bit. This one, you might have seen it coming. He's earned a nod already. I feel like he's going to win a few more by the time this season's over. Tegan Vasquez won his weight class at the Pacific Northwest Classic. The Glacial Wolfpack wrestler was also named the tournament's outstanding wrestler. Vasquez is currently shooting for his third state title. Columbia Falls wrestler Justin Windauer also picks up the nod. Windauer was 4-0 Friday at the Ronan Duels, earning a pin in the process. He followed that up Saturday by winning the individual championship for his weight class at the Western Montana Ronan Invitational. Awesome stuff from those wrestlers. Flathead. They could have earned a group nod. We might just we'll just throw that in there. The Flathead Wrestling team picked up another tournament win. Their their squad in general, they could probably make this list every week. We had a couple group nods before. We'll throw them a little love there. But overall, Tegan Vasquez, Justin Windauer, Akila Kubi, Brandon Gunlock. Those are your four prep players of the week from Hagadol Media Group Montana. Awesome stuff. One last message from Hagado Media Group Montana. The team in Montana is here to help you grow. Our skilled team will assess your marketing goals and craft ROI-focused campaigns home to meet your business needs. Our integrated marketing solutions will help your people find you wherever they are looking, whether it's Google, YouTube, apps, or the local newspaper. Contact Anton at 406-758-4410 for more information. That's 406-758-4410 for more information. Okay, let's round this puppy out. It's been a it's been a kind of a fast paced show, but with so much prep sports action, I just wanted to get us going on that, keep everybody up to date, and it's gonna start heating up soon. Next thing you know, it feels like winter sports just started. A couple weeks will float by, and we'll be talking about playoffs and stuff. So it, it's gonna fly by, and it's getting competitive. Now let's talk a little cat and grizz basketball, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So. The Grizz are currently in sixth place in the Big Sky at two and two, and the Bobcats are in third place with three and one record. So, as for the Grizz, Josh Bannon is the Grizz leading scorer. Another big year. He was a big part of the team last year. He's averaging sixteen point nine points per game. He's grabbing an impressive eight point eight point four rebounds per game. And then next up on the scoring list for the Grizz, Southern Utah transfer, Anan Moody. He's playing a big role. He's averaging over fourteen points per game and shooting almost forty percent from deep. Colorado State transfer Deshaun Thomas is a third leading scorer for the Grizz at 11.9 points per game. He's also grabbing over five rebounds. I believe both those guys are in their first year with the program. So you look at this Grizz team, they're starting out. They've had you know a little ups and downs, but when you have a couple guys who transferred in making an impact, maybe they haven't hit that midseason stride yet. Give them a little time, get, let them gel a little bit more. The best of this Grizz team might be on the horizon. As for the Bobcats, Raekwon Battle, a University of Washington transfer, he's been balling. He's leading the team with 15.9 points per game, which is nearly up seven points per game on his average last season. This is his second year with the Bobcats. The growth of Battle is something to watch down the stretch as things really heat up in conference play in the Big Sky Tourney. This Bobcats team made the NCAA tournament last year, and Battle, you know, he's kind of emerging now as another big-time perimeter scorer, so with... Last year's Big Sky MVP and Defensive Player of the Year, Jabril Bello, back at it again. He's the team's second-leading scorer right now, 12.8 points per game and 5.8 rebounds. 
All of a sudden, you got a nice duo there. And then Darius Brown, a transfer from Cal State University at Northridge, he's been a nice impact player for the Bobcats. He's kind of been like what we were talking about with our prep players of the week, Akila Kubi and that ability to be a glue player, do all the things her team needs, play defense, hustle, those things. Brown, it looks like, according to the stat sheet, he's just stuffing the stat sheet. He might not be averaging 20 points per game. He might not be averaging 10 assists, but he's averaging 8 points per game, 4.9 assists, 4.3 rebounds while leading the team in steals at 1.3 per game. Point guard, you need that floor general. You need a guy who can still run the ship. He's not really worried about getting buckets, but when the time comes, he can get his. That's what Brown's been for Montana State. you got to like a guy like that on the squad. As for the Lady Bobcats, they are currently tied for fourth in the Big Sky Conference with Darian White leading the team in scoring at 11.8 points per game. White is also leading the squad in rebounds with over five per contest. Leia Battle and Cola Bad Bear are both averaging over nine points a game to round out the team's top three leading scorers. The Lady Grizz are also tied for fourth in the Big Sky Conference. They're sharing a two and two record with the Bobcats. The Lady Grizz, they're leaning on forward Carmen G. Feller, who's averaging 13.4 points per game. That's leading the team. For also pulling in four rebounds. And guard Sammy Fatkin is having a big impact with 12.9 points per game, and it's a team-leading rebounder with 5.5 per contest. Gina Markson and Libby Stump are both averaging nine points per game to round out the Grizz scoring leaders. So with conference play really heating up, I'm just excited for basketball to really dive into it. I feel like football has been awesome. The Bobcats had that playoff run, so we were talking football almost all the way up until winter prep sports break. We never fully got immersed in the big sky basketball scene, but pretty soon it's going to be conference, you know, tourney time. March is going to be here before we know it. March Madness, NCAA tournament. Last year, the Bobcats made it. The Lady Bobcats made a run. I mean, all of a sudden, who knows? Maybe uh, we get another Montana school to crack the NCAA tournament once again. That'd be a lot of fun. So I'm excited. I'm excited for Big Sky Hoops to really kick off soon. And the fun thing about um, this era of college basketball on a team like the Bobcats and a team like the Grizz, where you have these returning players who have made, made a big impact with a couple of new transfers and new faces mixed in, it kind of takes till that mid-season to really know what you have. So I feel like now that conference play is heating up, these teams had some time to gel together. We're really going to see the best of all four of these Montana basketball squads soon enough. So I'm excited. The Bobcats and the Grizz, the Lady Bobcats, Lady Grizz, all four of them really hyped to see how they play down the stretch because, like I said, once you start gelling, you have everybody get that opportunity to play together a little bit, that's when the best of the team comes out, and I think that we are about to see that from these squads. So awesome stuff. All right, y'all, before we wrap this thing up, I want to give a special thanks to Hagadome Media Group Montana for their support and remind everyone listening that this episode was brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Nomad has worked with NASA and various branches of the United States military. So you know Nomad is a name you can trust with your manufacturing needs. For more info, visit nomadgcs.com. I repeat, nomadgcs.com for more information. All right, that'll do it. Thanks again to the Flyhead's best manufacturer, Nomad. Thanks again to Hagadome Media Group Montana. Next week, we'll take a further dive into the Big Sky Hoops action. We're going to keep going big on the prep winter sports action because between wrestling, hoops, and swimming, which we didn't even get a chance to mention today, it's going to be a jam-packed next couple of months. So I'm excited for that. I feel like once kind of conference play and the tournaments start getting near for wrestling and basketball and swimming. You start feeling that intensity rise with the prep teams and it's getting close. And like I said, with the big sky hoops, all of a sudden these teams are going to start hitting their stride. They're going to start really gelling. And that big sky tournament is going to be here before we know it. And we're really going to find out who's the real deal in the big sky over the next couple of weeks when it comes to the basketball court. We'll see if the Grizz or the Bobcats can kind of take the reins on either the men's or the women's side and make a run towards that conference title. So, I'm excited, very excited for basketball to heat up. It's about that time. So it's going to be an awesome show next week. Thank you to everybody watching. Thank you again to Hagadome Media Group Montana. Thank you again to Nomad GCS for the support. I'm Josh Dugan. And last up, thank you to you for checking out the show today. Thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you to everybody for watching. Like I said, just an action-packed time for prep sports and the basketball's heating up and Pretty soon we got the Grizz and Bobcats football offseason show. So just a lot going on. Fun stuff. Thank you, everybody. You have a great day. Enjoy your week.